All right, today I'm working on a Lenovo X230T uh, ThinkPad uh, tablet laptop combination. Uh, beautiful little machine, works really well. And what I want to do is install a MSATA SSD and secondary hard drive and maybe the RAM, but we'll see what we got in there so far. Uh, the first thing I want to do is take out the battery. Like that. And there's just a couple screws right here and right here, right on top of the RAM case or the RAM lid that you need to take out to take off the keyboard. So I'll just go ahead and start with that. Okay, and if I'm not wrong, there is one, two, three, and four screws left over to take off the palm rest, which we will need to access in order to put this card in. Because I believe it takes the slot of a WWAN card. So we'll see if there's actually one in, in here or not. Um, yeah, we should be good to go. Alright. Now to take out the keyboard, after you get those two screws out, all you have to do is push lightly at the bottom of the keyboard. Just push up, very light, and you should be able to uh, get the keyboard out. It wouldn't hurt to have a small flathead screwdriver if you do have one. Okay, easy as that. And there's a little ribbon cable plugged in right there that you can just pull right out. Okay, we'll place that off to the side. And now the palm rest should just come right off with those screws missing. Just have to be careful to score the sides and not break any of the little plastic tabs. There's probably a ribbon cable that I have to take out as well. And I bet it's this one right here. Um, I've got a little plastic tool that I can use to just have to lift up the little plastic piece right here to take the ribbon cable out. Now it's a little out of focus, but if you're doing this, you'll get the idea. And you can just pull it right out. And we'll just resume with the rest. There we go. Fairly easy. Oh, in this case, there actually is no WWAN card. Um, I was expecting there to be one in there. But we can see right here. I'll try to focus this actually. Okay, so you can actually see the little MSATA port right there, and that's where we're going to plug this in. Now, I'm hoping that this SSD actually works well. It's plugged into this adapter that I bought off eBay. Oh, that's horribly out of focus. Okay. Actually, I'm going to pause this really quick just to change the battery out of my camera. Okay, we're back in business. So, like I was saying before, um, I just need to remove this MSATA SSD from this adapter. This is a MSATA to uh, SATA adapter that I got off eBay. And... I've had varying amounts of luck with it. 
sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it just doesn't really seem to work that well at all so always err on the side of caution either way it's kind of a cool little piece of tech to play around with okay so you just want to line it up so it fits right into the slot it's pretty hard to get that wrong if you're looking at it and oh there's a little screw in here that I'll take out and that's what's going to hold this in place okay, I didn't mention this before but all you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver um, I used a little mini flathead screwdriver plastic piece uh, this came from like a cell phone repair kit and I just have some tweezers that help reach those uh, hard to get screws okay let's take a look you must have some extra light all right that's better okay uh, got a couple of cables here might have to take out but we'll see yeah just uh, you may have to take out the two cables um, connected to your Wi-Fi card and just remember which uh, that you get the black right there and the red right there positive and negative make sure you put them back in the right spot that's all All right, wonderful. Let's screw this guy in. Whoop. Here's where the tweezers come in handy when you drop little mini screws and your big fat fingers can't fish it out. It's also where a magnetic screwdriver bit would come in handy. Okay, I'll put these back onto the Wi-Fi card. They're very easy to take off and very easy to put back on. However, uh, always be careful too, you never know, you might. It's very easy to break something when it's so small and the hands are so big. Okay, it's also very hard to see without my glasses on. Uh, here we got uh, some loose cables here. I'm just going to kind of stuff them right there. Perfect. Now let's put the palm rest back on. Okay, there's actually a little slot to put the wires back in. Uh, may as well utilize that. You won't be able to see it under the palm rest, but it might keep it from uh, getting squashed or getting too much pressure. So it's very easy to put the palm rest back on. It just snaps right into place. And the ribbon cable is very easy to put back into. Lift up the little plastic tab and feed the wire back in, the cable back in. You'll notice if you look close enough, it's uh, designed and shaped to be very obvious when it's in and very obvious when it's not in. But later on you'll find out if your palm rest is not working. Okay, I'll put the keyboard back on. We'll take this ribbon and plug it right back into the board. There we go. Have you ever taken the cell phone apart? Very similar to that. Or a tablet. Something that rests right on. Right flat to the board. Okay. 
So you feed the keyboard in angled up, press down, and then pull down ever so gently. Snap right back into place. Okay, let's close the lid. Flip it over and put those screws back in. All right, now let's add the secondary storage device. I have a Toshiba hard drive. I'm just gonna grab something else, actually. Uh, no. There we go. <clears throat> We're just testing this out, so I'm gonna install this old 80 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. Seagate Momentus 5400.2. Okay, and to get to the hard drive, if you want to put your SSD or your hard drive in, one little screw right there, plastic tab opens right up. And we have our little hard drive um, caddy. Alright, now I believe, yeah, when I'm placing the hard drive into the caddy, you'll know it's in the right spot if the holes line up perfectly for you to put the screws back in. All right, we got these little rubber ends right here. They'll make the uh, hard drive fit nice and tight. Oh, this is actually kind of a tall hard drive. Let's see if it fits in the first place. Okay. Oh. Oh, what do you know? Okay, well, important lesson. I have an 80 gigabyte hard drive that is just the tiniest amount bigger than a more modern hard drive, I guess. So, uh, I'm gonna spare, I'm gonna pause the video and just swap it out. I guess this hard drive's too old. You know, let's just record it, I'll time lapse it. You can peer right in. Take a little peek inside to make sure you're lining up the SATA connections properly. You don't want to force them in the wrong way. This is already a bit of a tight fit. It'll make it though. Ooh, there we go. All right. Okay, anyway, that's a pretty tight fit. So I'm just gonna roll this little plastic tab up for the meantime, and we'll fit this back on top, nice and snug. All right. Okay, so now that we have both the mSATA and the hard drive installed. Put the battery back in, lock it up, and an extra light. Now this boot, I've got a Windows 10 installed on this USB. 
Let's stick it in. Uh, awesome thing about this is the upgrade from the X220 tablet, which I have behind me. We have one, two, uh, two USB 3.0s. I was not expecting that when I got this, which is pretty awesome. Love that super speed. Okay. Plug in our elusive uh, power adapters and we'll see. Let's fire this up. First time. Oh, I like it. Okay, and we'll hit F12. Temporary boot device. And. Yes, we have our Toshiba hard drive installed, and there's our MSATA SSD, 128 gigabytes. But we're looking for our USB to load Windows 10. So one thing that I like to do, um, if you've ever seen any one of my long boring videos, I like to run disk partition in command prompt when I'm installing Windows and you do that at this load in screen by hitting shift F10 and we type disk part, D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T, hit enter and list space disk, enter and we have 0, 1, and 2. In this case we want to clean up disk 0 and 1, the hard drive and the SSD. So we type select disk 0, enter, clean, enter. Sometimes it takes what feels like less than a second and sometimes it takes uh, up to a minute. I never experienced it taking that long though. There we go. Um, Alright, select disk 1 SSD. Clean. Enter. That was quick. All done. Exit. Enter. Exit. Enter and we'll hit refresh. We'll select the SSD and here we go. Alright, so we have Windows 10 all loaded up and that took a little bit longer than I was expecting. Um, and I think that has something to do with this uh, particular MSATA drive. Well, it seems to be working just fine right now. Um, I'll continue to try to test it out for a little while to see if it holds up. And one thing I'll show you, if you're still watching, is just how to access disk partition from the Microsoft uh, <coughs> OS here without command prompt. So you just hit, and so we can initialize a storage device. So you hit the Windows key, you can type partition, and you click on the one that says create and format hard disk partitions. And we know from earlier, from hitting the Think Center, Think Center button up here at startup, that our other hard drive was detected. So we want to right click the black area here, right by disk 0, click new simple volume, hit next. Um, it should default to the max amount of space that you can put on to this partition, which is the pretty well the whole drive. So we'll just hit next. Uh, if you want to assign a different letter to it, all the way down to Z, I'll just stick with D. Uh, and just. Keep this top uh, option 
selected and we'll hit next and we'll perform a quick format we already cleaned it earlier but we'll just do it again okay there we go we'll close disk partition open up file manager hit this PC and there we go now we can start saving stuff to the secondary hard drive and now you have an awesome laptop setup with not only an SSD but also a secondary storage device um, anyway I think that's the end of the video if you ever have the chance to pick up a X230 tablet uh, especially for a good price it's worth it for the novelty alone but the processor itself let's pull up device manager because I don't have it memorized but we have a it's a dual core of quad pro, four processor excuse me uh, it is a Intel Core i5 3320M CPU at 2.6 gigahertz uh, dual core and four logical processors it's a pretty good little CPU and I just have four gigabytes of RAM installed right now but I'd like to install more and this thing will run quite well okay well there we go um, successful video so if you have any questions just leave a comment below and I'll probably get to it because my channel is very small and I'm a lonely man so uh, if you, yeah if you have any questions I'll uh, try to help you out or if you see me doing something terribly wrong then feel free to point it out so thanks a lot for watching and I hope this helped you out in some way have a nice day